Hey everybody, this is Alex from Gnome Inc. and I'm here to show you how to use Gnome Memristors with our new Memristor Discovery Board. A little PCB that Tim and I put together so that people can easily demonstrate uh, Memristive behavior including hysteresis, plots, and uh, resistance programming. Uh, plugs into the Analog Discovery 2. Uh, thank you, Digilent, for making our job oh so much easier. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, the GNOME dip chips just go in, in here. Uh, nice little, little socket to remove any um, you know pressure on the pins because currently these chips are a bit pricey. Sorry about that. Price will be coming down uh, soon as we uh, as we get all the EDA tools together and um, you know people can really start uh, ordering these and putting them in their applications. Uh, so the board is pretty simple, uh, really just, um, you know, couples to the analog discoveries, uh, waveform generators and oscilloscopes. Uh, we use the digital I.O. to select uh, memristors um, via these analog switches. And we have a little series resistor here. Um, it's set to uh, 5K, um, 5 kilo ohms, to limit the current and prevent us from creating the magic smoke, which you definitely don't want to do when you're paying $200 a chip for these memristors. Let's get started. Uh, first, we're going to form the memristors. So this is the Hysteresis app. Um, this is the first app that we're going to deliver with the memristor discovery board. And its purpose is to just demonstrate all the uh, various components um, creating an application for the memristor discovery. Um, we're going to have some add-ons here later. Uh, but this is really just to uh, get the party started. So what you can do is um, select the device that you'd like to work with up here. Uh, and you can set the applied um, waveform, sine, or triangle, as well as um, offset, amplitude, frequency. And uh, if you decide to change the series resistor, uh, you can change that here as well. We also have different views uh, that you can use in order, to, in order to do this. So let's start here. Let's select the first uh, device. Um, we have our starting amplitude, 0.5 volts. Um, we're gonna, frequency is set at 100 hertz. So let's start here. Um, let's take a look at the IV plot. Okay, so what we can see, the current here is down below one microamp. This indicates a device that has not yet been formed. You see a little bit of hysteresis, but um, really not much, nothing, nothing good here yet. So we gotta form this device. So what we're gonna do is increase the applied voltage to it. Let's just keep on, jack that up. Okay, we're starting to see there, boom, we got a, a nice hysteresis. Now, in order to really burn these devices in, um, what we're going to do is jack that current up pretty high, and we're going to briefly apply a pulse offset like that. Boom. Okay, we really just sort of, uh, you know, we, we hammered it pretty hard there. Um, so now we're going to take the amplitude down. We're going to apply some negative offset. Um, what this is going to do is um, sort of reset the device, get all those ions all back on um, the, uh, the opposite side of uh, the cathode. Okay, so we put that to zero. We should now have a nicely formed device, as you can see. So now we can shift to the conductance versus voltage. And uh, let's lower this amplitude down here. Let's just get that really, really far down there. Okay, now what we see are these two little dots here. Um, this dot represents the calculated conductance of the device versus the, the applied voltage and the voltage drop across the memristor. And uh, we're averaging our measurements um, up here with an exponential moving average. So K is the sort of exponential moving average factor. Um, if we make that smaller, or I'm sorry, bigger, then uh, it'll be less averaging. So you could move this all the way to one. That would be no averaging. You just get crazy noise. Here, let me, let me put this up at point, uh, 0.01, 0.02 volts. Okay, so no averaging. You can see the sort of a cloud of, of sort of measurement noise. Um, as we, um, we lower this, um, let's set this down. Okay, we can see that the measurement noise starts to get averaged away. Uh, 0 0.01 is a, is a good place to, to keep this. Okay, so let me show you how to program the resistance state. So select the offset here. 
Uh, this is the, um, the offset of the applied sine wave. So right now you can see that this thing's oscillating um, with a 0 0.02 amplitude and we've offset it by 0 0.05 volts. And we can use the, the right and left arrow keys of the keyboard to actually move this around. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over. Um, notice as I increase the voltage, the, uh, the conductance is starting to increase. So the memristor's conductance is starting to go up. Um, and we can do this um, like so. Notice the, uh, the conductance, or the, I'm sorry, the voltage drop across the memristor given here by the orange um, dot is uh, you know, just about at the threshold of the device. Um, so as you increase the voltage, the conductance uh, of the memristor increases and the voltage drop across the device decreases. So it's sort of a self-limiting behavior because of the fact that it's in a um, it's in series with this, uh, with this uh, series, this 5K series resistor. Okay, so we just, um, we just increased it all the way up to a volt, and the conductance has increased. We, if you want to sort of um, drive it a little bit harder, you could increase the amplitude um, of the sine wave. And so it'll hit those sort of higher voltages, and it'll sort of get the conductance up a little bit more. But for now, let's just set that to zero. So we've, we're essentially applying a one volt DC signal, and we can see we got it up to 0.75 uh, millisiemen in conductance. Okay, we can lock the axis now and uh, select the offset again and bring that voltage back down. Okay, so we're bringing it back down. Now it's just above, um, you know, zero volts, so we're right now uh, with an offset of 0 0.05 volts. So we're applying 0 0.05 volts and just a little voltage drop across the device, and you can see that the conductance is hanging out just about, you know, point. 0.65 millisiemens. Okay, we see a little bit of a of a decay. This is normal, and then it'll sort of uh, even off after after a little bit. Um, now, if we wanted to bring the device back down in conductance, we can move over with the left key, left arrow. That'll decrease the voltage. It'll go negative, and we can just keep on decreasing the voltage until the conductance starts to drop again. And and we can move it back over. Right, so we just dropped it a little bit. Um, so now the the conductance is about you know 0.5 millisiemens, and we can do that uh, to keep on lowering the, uh, the conductance like so. And notice that in this case there was this sort of avalanche as it all came down. This is as much a function of the circuit that we're using, the the voltage divider between the memristor and uh, the series resistor. So in the positive going direction, what happens is as you increase the applied voltage, the voltage drop across the, the device decreases, which decreases the rate at which the memristor is um, increasing its conductance. So there's sort of, sort of self-limiting behavior. Um, the result is that it's easier to program the resistance state um, in the positive going you know, voltage direction. Um, now in the negative going voltage direction, what happens, let's get up here, um, as, as you apply an increasing sort of negative voltage and it tips the, the threshold uh, for, for changing the conductance of the device, so the negative going sort of adaptation threshold, um, the, the conductance decreases, but that means the voltage drop across the device relative to you know, this, the series resistor goes, goes up and what causes you know, a bigger applied voltage, which causes the conductance to fall even more, and so it's just like avalanche effect. So you, know, you can program it going both in the positive and negative going directions, but take note of the circuit that you've put these memristors in, because that has a big effect on the dynamics of the device. I've been you know, thinking and dreaming about this stuff for a decade, and I've had people tell me that it would take billions of dollars, or that I was crazy, or that we could never do it, or, or we were too poor, how could we possibly, you know, do something like this? And well, you know what? <laughs> we are, and this can fit in your pocket. Matter of fact, I was in Portland recently in a cafe, and, uh, you know, I was adjusting the conductance of a memristor while people were sipping lattes. So, um, this is a new era, and we welcome you to take part in it. Memristor Discovery is going to be open sourced. Uh, we're going to be developing new board generations. We've already found a little glitch in the first board, as we would imagine there would be. Um, so we're going to fix that. 
and uh, we're gonna keep on making improvements until you know we own these devices um, you know intellectually uh, we have to understand how they work and we have to get good at using them and uh, and from here on it's aha nodes thermodynamic RAM um, God knows where this is going to end, but uh, this is definitely the beginning. Um, memristors are now as easy to program as uh, a game on computer. Just just using the right and left arrow keys, we can increment and decrement the conductance value of a memristor um, with a PCB and oscilloscope that fits in your pocket and powers um, and is controlled by the USB port. So. Uh, Enjoy and, uh, you know, help us. Help us get this going. Um, help us solve the problems. Uh, use the board and um, let us know what you think. Thanks.